everybody. I am making my record because I was 15 minutes late by bus and I still made it on time for my class. Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sami Nadine Jung. I'm a former financial journalist turned media and communication scholar, currently doing my PhD here in Vancouver, Canada. In my channel, I share ups and downs of my PhD journey. But most importantly, I share the life lessons that I learned along the way. I hope you enjoy the messages that I share and see you sometime in steady with me sessions as well. Now, let's start the vlog. ended and it was so cold inside the AC was full on so I just wanted to get some sun I'm outside and I'm gonna go to Gastown um, I packed my lunch so I'm gonna have my lunch outside somewhere and then at 1 p.m. I have an interview to do so um, yeah this time I'm being interviewed by uh, a couple of um, students undergrad students and they got in touch with me all the way from Georgia in the US. Um, yeah, so they're doing this capstone project where they're trying to develop, you know, a system for or, um, they want to help out um, folks who are digital nomads. So yeah, it would be interesting because she got in contact with me through watching my YouTube uh, videos. So yeah, um, but let's first feed myself. Um, well, yeah, so like where are you from question is always very tricky because I don't, it, my life has been so dispersed all geographically. I mean, I was born and partially raised in South Korea, then I moved to the US. Uh, I mainly lived in the East Coast, New Jersey, New York. Then I moved over to Michigan, Ohio, Midwest. Yeah, and then in between I was in Germany for a little bit, then went back to South Korea to work for a while, then moved to UK, and then now I'm in Canada. So it's just kind of like, yeah, it's a, it's been a journey. So it's it's hard for me to say like I'm from because I, I don't really feel like I've fit in anywhere to be honest. Yeah. Um, it, it sort of just happened. Um, I mean, the first move to the U.S. was mainly because I wanted to become a pianist back then. I wanted to become a concert pianist, so that's what brought me to the U.S. to study mainly. Um, then Germany, actually too. Um, I wanted to learn how the East and the West Germany reu reunited. Uh, you know, looking at South Korean history, you know, we're still divided country. Um, yeah, and then afterwards, um, things kind of, I don't know, yeah, things kind of just happened. <laughs> it, um, well, back then, we didn't have much of the internet. It was very limited information. It was like mouth-to-mouth -mouth information, <laughs> mostly. So that was pretty hard. Um, but when I moved to the, to the UK, for instance, um, you know, I heavily relied on information online, um, a lot of blog posts, bloggers who put out lots of information out there. Um, also moving to Canada as well. Um, there are now so many different um, platforms where you could get information like YouTube as well as, yeah, like Twitter. Oh, yeah, many, many hours, many, many days. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I think one thing that I should mention is that I think I always uh, tried to open up a bank account that had uh, that um, that allowed me to open up a credit credit card right away um, because I knew that always building a credit in that specific country is very important. So that's usually the first thing that I consider when I open up a bank account, whether that bank offers you um, the credit card. Yeah. <laughs> How would you define community? <laughs> mm, while I'm abroad, okay. <sighs> well, I mean, community is extremely important in the sense that you find a sense of 
security and you find a sense of um, trust and warmth especially when you're abroad you're apart from your family so you want to have that tie that tie with um, with others I think I found my communities through um, for instance church gatherings or well mainly academic work mainly work yeah work related um, events and yeah and, and that's how you kind of sort of expand your network I guess yeah I feel like I mean language barrier affects every aspect of your life and being in a different country if you can't speak the language of that country so I mean I think the first thing that comes to my mind is obviously when you get lost how are you gonna find your destination and even if you ask you don't if you don't understand what that person is saying then yeah that's a trouble um I know because like yeah when I went to Austria from Germany Austrian accent is just out of this world like I can't understand a thing that Austrians say so um, even though it's the same language because the accent is so different like I could literally did not understand anything so um yeah just trying to find a way or just trying to get the information itself like the information that you're trying to get yeah you, you yeah you, if you can't converse <laughs> yeah just settling down i think and making sure that everything is set um i mean first when you first arrive in a new country you, you try to find a housing first of all it, it was a huge stress for me when I first arrived in Vancouver, tried to get an apartment and um, I, I even left earlier than my fall semester starts, like like two and a half months earlier so that I could well settle down and then start my PhD and on a good note, but um, I ended up injuring my legs um, right after I moved in, so it kind of, yeah, anyways, that's a different story. But yeah, just trying to get the housing settled out and yeah, I, I guess um, what you mentioned about community is I think it's important. Yeah, when you first arrive somewhere and you don't know anybody, then it can get kind of hard. <sighs> Cultural clash. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to go too dark, but there are definitely elements of racism that you, you experience one way or the other, wherever you go, and uh, people's um, biases, assumptions. Um, I mean, it's 2023, and I can't believe that people... Anyways, we don't have to go there. Um, but yeah, um, so I think folks who... who especially to the u.s if one only had like an american dream like you know all rosy and and first arrived there and the kinds of sentiment and the kind of relationships that you start having with people may not always be that rosy it can be very 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 difficult and it can kind of hurt you too so um yeah i think in the beginning you just have to learn how to be um rough and not rough like they're tough um knowing that things can happen yeah that's a that's a difficult question because i think living abroad itself already is a huge challenge and it can't be it can't be something that is easy if it's easy then it won't be living abroad just living staying home staying in your comfort zone um but I mean, that magic wand would make me be completely um, well-informed about the, the systems of that country, especially when you first move, uh, move to a new country. Um, I mean, for instance, like Germany, there is so much bureaucracy that you have to go through, all so many documents, and they take weeks to get get things done and even just try to get a landline in your in your apartment um it, it takes a month so um just trying to settle in i think the first few months are always the hardest so i think if if 
you guys can develop something that <laughs> that would make those first few months of those um, digital nomads or, or people who are traveling or trying to settle down in a new country that would be that would be something that can be uh, can be good. Can I ask you a quick question? So, what what do you, what's what's your end goal? Like, what what are your what is what is this project about? Like, trying to build something or? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Probably a platform. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, I I mean, best of luck and yeah, thanks so much for um, uh, communicating with someone who is like all the way over in <laughs> the West Coast. <laughs> I'm sure the weather is getting hot over there. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Best of luck. <laughs> Thank you, I need that. <laughs> Bye. Oh my gosh, I'm so... Um, I don't know how I feel right now. It is um, 2.23 a.m. and I... This that was the longest um, record of study with me session. We did about six hours and fifty five minutes, seven hours. Um, but see, so I already have a draft, which is amazing. It's a thirty page report. It will be released. Um, by the by the organization that I work with and it is to really help um, better the working conditions of a lot of the ride hail and um, food delivery workers and I've been really emotionally involved while I was working on this project but four months um, we started in April and you guys saw like the interview and you know, when I started off the project, meeting everybody and introducing myself and yeah, four months went by like that and you know, today is August 5th, um, it's 2.24am, completely pitch dark outside, um, yeah, it has come to an end. So on Sunday, um, today's, yeah, so we're moving towards Saturday. So on Sunday after church, I'm probably going to go through just one more final proofread and send this off to my manager. And then I'm done. And I've got tons of work to do for my fellowship application, which um, I really got to get to after, after I get this done. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I really hope that my work is going to bring some meaningful, meaningful contributions, make meaningful contributions. Okay, I think I really gotta hit the sack now. Good night. <laughs>